everyone and welcome back to the Commodore Room. Hope everyone's having a great day. Now that the holiday season is here, it kind of reminds me of two big things. The first is my favorite Christmas movie, Die Hard. And the second is the Commodore Christmas demo. The demo came out in 1982. And I remember it from being in the stores when I was a kid, going up and seeing the cool demo. Not that the sound or graphics were all that good, really, but for the time frame, compared to some of the other computers that were for sale at the time, it was really kind of neat. So what better way to bring in the holiday spirit at my house than to get my Commodore 64 hooked up to the big screen and showing the Christmas demo. Uh, the challenge I'm going to have is the Commodore either has RF out, which is you know channel 3 or 4 or 2 or 3 or whatever it is, and then also that video out. And so with the video out, I could hook it up to the composite on the TV and should be able to get that. Um, the problem is I've hung the TV on the wall, as you'll see here in a little bit, and there really is no composite cable hooked up. And I don't want to have a wire draping down the wall. So all I have running to the TV is HDMI. So I need my Commodore 64 to have HDMI. The easiest way to get HDMI on a Commodore 64 is to use a composite to HDMI converter, or there are some uh, S-Video to HDMI converters. So these work really well. They take in, as this one does, composite input, and then left and right audio, and then kick out on the other side, standard HDMI. So this is all fine and dandy, except then it kind of got me thinking, well, wouldn't it be cool if my Commodore just had HDMI out? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear this guy apart, rip out his circuit board, remove all this extra stuff that we don't need, and I'm going to mount this inside the Commodore 64 so that I have a permanent HDMI out. The reason that I would want to take this RF modulator out, ta-da, so the reason I wanted to take the RF modulator out was actually to give me a little bit of board space to put that, um, put the circuit board from the converter. So um, uh, based on the schematic, it looks like I should be able to take this out and everything still work properly. Um, but then I've got a place to put the board. So let me show you the board that I ripped out of one of those converters and see what we're dealing with. So this is the board out of that HDMI converter. And I actually bought a couple of them so I'd have a, you know, a couple guinea pigs in case something goes horribly wrong. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these RCA connectors, which would be the composite, and then the, uh, as you can see here, the yellow is the composite, and then the red and white for the audio. I'm going to remove that connector completely. That way it'll actually fit a little bit better in the 64, and then I'm just going to wire up um, directly to this board from the uh, proper places on the 64. Here we've got HDMI out. I'm going to go through my strategy on how we're going to handle that. And then the switch here is for... Uh, 720 and 1080 and then finally we got a power port here so I'll have to make a cable to pull power out of some place on the uh, 64 we'll figure that out here in a little bit as well but this is basically the board um, it's pretty small and as you can see it's not simply a matter of you know a little bit of a signal adjustment going from composite which is you know basically an analog signal to HDMI which is very much a digital signal requires some some logic and some processing and that's what all these chips are for so it's not as simple as a composite to S video conversion or, or something like that. So um, either way, this is what we're going to do. So back to my uh, guinea pig 64 here. I'm thinking something like this. I will get some mounts. We'll mount that guy in there so he doesn't touch anything. And you can see because of space ripping these connectors off is going to help. Since everybody knows that all good YouTube videos have a schematic in them, let's take a look at the schematic for this particular revision of the Commodore 64 motherboard. You'll see here in this section that I'm going to highlight in red, this is the RF modulator. And so it really does appear to be just power, a ground of course, video and audio, and that's about it. So seeing this, I went ahead and removed the modulator as I showed you just a minute ago. And I did test it, everything just works fine. So here we have the Breadman 64 with the RF modulator removed. And as you can see, it still works. That's good. And I was hoping that was going to be the case. And it looked like it from the schematic that I've been working off of. So what we're going to do now is jump in the composite to HDMI adapter that we're working with. So I went ahead and removed the RCA connectors that we looked at just a minute ago. And now what I need to do is solder some jumper wires so I can go from the 64 up to this converter. 
The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the left and right audio channels on the converter. The Commodore 64 is not a stereo device, at least the default ones are not stereo devices. And so in order for the sound to come out, both speakers at the same time, I need to short, um, connect them together. And that's what I'm going to do here. As I mentioned earlier, I had two of these. And anytime I do a project, I always try to get two of whatever it is I'm working on, especially if they're not real expensive. That way, in case something happens, I make a mistake, um, you know, let the magic smoke out. And oddly enough, that's what I just did with this. So let me see if I can get you zoomed in here. So right here you can see that capacitor used to look like one of those capacitors. So unfortunately what happened was I was jump ring this into the 64 and it accidentally, the circuit board accidentally brushed up against my power supply. So what happened was I was using the board and I jumped it up and it flipped up and touched that power supply which as you can see is metal and blew that capacitor. So now I'm going to have to open up the other one, my backup, and uh, Try this again, hopefully with a little less smoke this time. Okay, here is the new one. And it's a little bit different board layout, which is interesting. Um, not completely surprising, but it's interesting. And um, oddly enough, this one actually works now, and I didn't blow anything up on it. So I think we're ready to figure out where to mount this guy. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take these labels that I made with the label maker, and hopefully you can see this one. It says video. I'm going to take these, cut them up so that they are very small, and put the labels on the appropriate connections. And then I'm going to use these connectors. And I'll give you an example here what this is going to look like. I'm going to put it in what is going to be the audio place. And obviously once I solder it in there, it'll be nice and straight and parallel to the board. But I'm going to solder the connectors at an angle going this way. So, um, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got all the little connection points labeled. So it should be no question where things go later. Uh, I like to label things in case, you know, years from now somebody else happens to get this piece of equipment. They'll have an idea where, where the wires go and whatnot. So... There we go. It's not, not perfect, but doesn't look too bad. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Notice that this is where the RF modulator used to be. These are our connectors that we put on. I put two plastic standoffs in, and I also took our circuit board and put a plastic standoff on it. I got it to the point where the screws, the plastic screws that will go in here will line up with our circuit board. And our third standoff that's on the circuit board itself, right down here, will keep it from falling down and making contact. So I can screw that in right there, and it'll ride above the board, kind of like that. Uh, except, of course, it'll be scooted over just a little bit. So it's going to fit like that, which I don't think is too bad. So we've got the converter installed into the 64, pulling power temporarily with this connector um, from the motherboard itself. I've got these big plastic standoffs in there, basically as thumb screws, so I can take this thing in and out as we're finishing tweak and stuff. And I've got, um, at least for now, an HDMI cable going out into the monitor. So, so and there you can see that we've got it on our monitor. So there's our circuit. Or a converter installed in the 64 and there's our monitor so if I power the 64 off everything is powered off including the converter the 64 is on and the converter takes a second to sync up and do all of the things it needs to do so the uh, power on is a little bit delayed but not too bad okay we've got our converter hooked up now using this ribbon cable the, the other cable that I had was just really not going to work, so I found a, uh, basically a circuit type ribbon cable to use for HDMI. So it's a very, very thin, obviously not super durable, but it's really just going to go from here to the case. So that should actually work pretty well. And as you can see, works pretty well here too. So I think the next step, we'll mount that on the case, put it back together, and we should be good to go. 
To be honest, I've never actually mounted a connector like this on a 64. And so what I thought was going to be somewhat challenging ended up being very challenging. The plastic is a lot thicker than I anticipated. And I tried a variety of techniques to try to get through this plastic and, and make this thing look nice. So what I ended up doing was finding a tip for my soldering iron that was sort of a bladed tip. So it got really hot and had kind of a blade on it. And I just cut with that a fairly decent sized hole in the back of the case. And then I used an X-Acto knife to trim it and, and smooth it out and, and make it nice and square. Um, I'm skipping a lot of video here because it took me about two hours, uh, again, trying various techniques. It took me about two hours to get this to be the way I wanted, and um, I'll let you be the judge. I know this is going to look a little strange, but just roll with me for a minute on this. So rather than glue that connector in, I'm going to use a zip tie. So I can kind of kink that zip tie with pliers to get the corners nice and sharp and really pull on it, and that'll hold it in there really really solid that it's not going to slide out as you're pushing and pulling on HDMI cables and that will also allow me to remove this coupler in the event that I needed to. If I glued it it would be very hard to get out, it would leave residue, it would be kind of a mess. Uh, the zip tie will absolutely hold it. I've used this technique before and it'll allow me to remove this connector if I ever need to. So we got the converter board, uh, temporary power until I uh, the new connectors I ordered arrive. So this is just like an old cell phone charger I chopped up. And then, of course, the ribbon cable, which goes to the HDMI and to the converter itself. So we should be able to clamp it back down. And there's what it looks like on the back. The only thing left to do is to fire it up. So now we've got a Commodore 64 with an HDMI plug built in. And of course, the last step is to hook the Commodore 64 up to my big screen TV so I can watch the Christmas demo. I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi 1541 project to load the software and enjoy. I'd like to thank everyone for watching the video today. If you enjoy this type of content, feel free to subscribe. If you like the video, feel free to give us a thumbs up or heck, do both. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with us today. And I hope you come hang out in the Commodore room again with us real soon.